chocolate lines up planetarily with the sun. Chocolate is an octave of sun energy. Mm. Same octave as serotonin. It's on the same octave. All right, so we've got a question here. Durin order. This one is space. Durin order, Skeletor. Remember, folks, fructose is very fattening. Very fattening. Okay, question. Let's get into it. Let's be serious now. Enough playing games. We have a question here from a 16 year old graduating this summer. Homeschool. Nice. Do it online. Works two part time jobs. 16 year old. I work full time once I'm done with school. However, I need your guidance on what I should do once I'm 18. My plan is to work full time until I'm 18. Keep saving money. Um. I would love to do fitness and health, of course, to help people eat better. And I love outdoors and exercise. Awesome, man. That's when your experience of life is enhanced by Mother Nature and being outdoors and fitness. Man, you are on the fucking right road. Seriously. Seriously. Um, what should I do? Become a personal trainer, YouTube videos, become Zumba, a yoga instructor. What did you do? Um, blah, 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 blah. To make this short, get to the point. Um, I need some guidance. Family, maybe not the best people to ask. Good question, good question. Now, what did I do when I was your age? 16, I was still living at home, smoking a lot of drugs, eating McDonald's, no fitness. I was actually catching a bus about a mile to school, a mile. Now I can run a sub five minute mile at 35 years of age. So when I was your age, I was doing fuck all. I was wasting my life, man. Wasting my life, man. If I was into this last time when I was that age, shit. Anyway, better late than never. When I was 17, my mum kicked me out of home. So I was on the street, living on welfare on the street. Best thing that ever happened to me, getting kicked out of home, because it made me like, wake the fuck up and go, all right, what do you want to do with your life? So living on the street when I was 17, living on welfare, and then eventually found myself a little cheap rental, um, worked as a clown, worked at football, selling football magazines. Got a job working in factories, worked factories for a while on the production line, that was interesting. And then I studied personal training course. And my first year I didn't get in, so I got a job as a bicycle courier, bicycle messenger. Then the second year, 1999, got in with the uh, fitness trainership course, fitness personal training course, that was awesome. Then worked in the gyms for a while, personal training for a while, then back as a bike courier, and then working in a sports store, then working as a in a bicycle store, worked at the running store, bike store, then got hit by a bus after I came back from a racing uh, season in Europe, got hit by a bus, got injured, forced to live on welfare for a number of years, lived below the poverty line, had a lot of time to really focus on what's important in my life and, and what is important for myself is health, fitness, and helping others attain that and at the same time we save the animals on the planet. So that was fantastic, took time in my life. Now I'm making YouTube videos, stuff like that. So my tip for you would be just to write down some goals, what you want to do. You obviously want to stay slim, lean, and healthy, improve that and help others achieve that goal as well, which is fantastic. And it's great that you're so young and you're going to bypass all that drug scene and clean butyrol and starving and binge and purging and only one night a week eating carbohydrates for dinner and just the whole stimulant, 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 purge, binge to get lean. Now you can understand how the human body works and just work with it and just grow. It's going to be fantastic. Good on you. Um, what would you do? I would just work, get a job at a fruit store, get a job at a running store, get a job at a dancing store, get a job at whatever you're passionate about. Don't do anything you're not passionate about. You might work somewhere where you're passionate and everyone else is not that passionate. That's, don't let that influence too much. Just use that as an experience, yeah? And just everything's a stepping stone to something else. So that's my tip, man, is just write down what you want to do and just go, how, and then how, how do I do that? And create an ecosystem around you of people that support that. If your family's not supportive, but you're still living with them, then try to avoid causing too much conflict. Just, you know, eat, sleep, and then the rest of the time you're out of the house, okay? So avoid wasting energy with people who just don't get it. Because you can spend, <laughs> we can spend the rest of your life debating or arguing or trying to convince people who are just never really going to get it. When it comes to living with people, the secret is instead of bickering with them or telling them, lead by example. 
If you just meet someone on the street for 10 seconds, you probably never see them the rest of your life, tell them straight up how it is. But if you're living with someone, telling them straight up how it is, vocally it can be a little bit too much in your face because you're living so close. So I say, when you're living with someone, walk your talk, and when you just meet someone for the first time or last time ever in your life, talk your walk, you know? So hopefully that makes sense, but have the goals, man. You can do anything the fuck you want to do. You're not too young, because I've been to the Philippines and I've seen, you know, kids that were maybe barely seven years old picking up bits of tin to collect to eat. You know, kids living on the streets as little as age seven, you know, so go to India, go to Philippines and go to places like that and you'll see what I'm talking about. So you can volunteer with things, but just do what you're passionate about, get into it. You know, you might get a job at a, a, a running store and you know, a lot of people work there and you go to another place and you like it better or you just, you go, fuck it, I'm here to do my job and I'm gonna focus on that and not focus about anything else. So avoid getting caught up in other people's dramas um, unless you're making YouTube videos that you know sort of troll it. But seriously, that would be my tip, is just have goals and only do what you want to do. And enjoy living frugally. Enjoy li my haircut, I just use, I do it in front of a, a car mirror, a broken car mirror out the back with just a pair of shavers. So I don't spend a lot of money on meaningless stuff. I've got a power meter for my bike, I ride excellent bikes, I eat awesome nourishment every day. I live in a location, that the house is pretty, this house is pretty run down and beat up, but Across there is, you know, I've got um, access to amazing training grounds, cycling groups coming past my front door literally. So I'm in a world class location living in a, a dump. It would be for a lot of people, but I'm not I'm not fussed for that because my location where I live is more important than, you know, if the if the door behind me is like the latest gold door handle design or whatever meaningless crap that means. So live frugally, follow your heart, live with passion, and remember every day is an adventure. Every day is an adventure, and every day can be a day to remember for the rest of your life. This morning I woke up and did a 24-kilometer running race to the South Australian Trail Championships. I got a massive stitch in the first kilometer, <laughs> just so I was sitting third overall. Third overall, stitch came in, boom, just, I was almost going to pull out. I'm like, no, no, just keep going, finish the race. There's people, you know, who are doing it, and they're way behind you, and they're still going to finish. So I had no excuse. I just jogged along with my stitch and enjoying the fresh air. So you seek adventure, live with passion, have goals, live frugally, live simply, it's, it's tread lightly on the planet, um, you know, understand the importance of high carb lifestyle, low fat vegan, fruit, use your friend, things like that, early nights, consistent hydration, clear urination up to 10 times a day, a few times a night, things like that. The closer you can live with nature and still feel comfortable is such a gift because you'll need not as much money as other people you know, so some people are just so locked into the daily grind that they are tr they're they're, at, they're, at, they're they're their own prisoners. Like, I can sleep in the dirt as long as I've got a, a Gore-Tex bivy bag or whatever. I can ride a bike that's three years old. It doesn't have to be a 2013 model or whatever. So I can wear shoes that I've had for a few years and they've got holes in them. As long as they work, as long as it's safe and it's functions, that's what cares about. So avoid getting caught up in the Prada handbags and the... <laughs> Gucci perfume and the just the nonsense, the three hundred dollar haircuts and the, or the the fifty dollar haircuts. Avoid getting caught up in all that nonsense because that is a one way street to an unsatisfied life. Because you're always comparing yourself with other people and it's it's, just a, it's a competition that's never going anywhere. You get really good at doing things that are really dumb. Does that make sense? Like, wow, my haircut is like cost me fifty bucks or three hundred bucks or my bike's worth you know whatever, but it's it's easy to get caught up in that thing. Or, you know, my, my how, just, you know what I'm saying. I don't have to go on about it. Live simply, have goals, follow your heart, live with passion, seek adventure, appreciate mother nature, eat simply, stay lean, clean, love it. Here's a picture of me, 2007. I was living on welfare at the time and traveling in Cambodia, volunteering at orphanages and just, I'm handing out rambutans here. And these kids, man, these Cambodian kids, they're just so grateful, you know, like you give them a rambutan or two rambutans and the whole day they're stoked, the whole day, two pieces of fruit, the kids are stoked. So often traveling to countries like this helps you reground, rebalance, reappreciate and develop that attitude of gratitude because so many people 
in the world live very frugally and very simply and just very simply. And you can see that people over there, some of them get caught up in the rat race and they're not happy with what they got. And some people are like, man, this is all I want. I just want to grow my rice, eat my fruit, have my, you know, my kids and my family or whatever and just and be a part of the community and do well and do good. Base your achievement on how well you positively influence others.